Good morning from Tetev, Armenia. Today we are on our way to our first and only monastery in this country. But if you didn't know, there are over 4,000. Armenia is the first ever Christian state or country, so they have a lot of monasteries and some of the oldest. I think we picked one of the best to visit. So we think, but we'll find out. We are on our way there right now. Tetev, the village that we're staying in, is a very small village. There's only a couple hundred people here, and each home houses basically an entire family from grandparents to grandchildren. We have been staying with one of those families, and it's been a lot of fun. We have not gone hungry at all, that's for sure. And they have given us a lot of what we are calling mountain water, which is homemade vodka. It's been a full couple of days. In addition to visiting the very old monastery, something else pretty much everyone does when they come here is ride the wings to Tatev, which is the longest reversible cable car in the entire world. It's over 6,000 meters long. The only reason we might not ride it is because the actual monastery is 12 minutes walk away from our Airbnb, so there's really no purpose for us to ride it today. But we might because we're here and why not? We were told the monastery opens at 10 a.m., but we showed up a little early and everything was just open, so we walked right in, didn't have to pay anything. There's only like one other small group of people here, so this is a great time to come. This is awesome. Just a free-for-all, you kind of get to wander where you want. This is an active church to this day, so there's still service that's held here. It's really incredible. The site was originally pagan, but the monastery was built in the 9th century. During its golden era, this was home to over a thousand monks and artisans. And not only that, at one point in time, there was over 10,000 manuscripts housed here. Sadly, they were all lost or destroyed during an invasion. Some of these doors are pretty tiny. It's a little spooky in here, I'm getting out. This place is creepy. <laughs> there was an earthquake in 1931 that destroyed a lot of this monastery and it wasn't until 2018 before it was fully restored to what you see today. And actually the night that we arrived, we were sitting in the kitchen talking and then our host stopped and froze and they pointed to the light and it was swaying. So we experienced an earthquake here, a small one, but an earthquake. I'm going for it. Nothing's telling me I can't go down here. build such small rooms. It's like everything was a secret passage. Oh my goodness. This is so beautiful. Nathan's off wandering. I'll have to try and go track him down. This is great. I can definitely see why they chose this spot. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. I wish we could live here. This is like magic. It, I feel like I'm in a 
castle right now. It's the same view, but different windows. It's, it's different. We haven't even seen the main cathedral yet. These are just the outside rooms. This is the bishop's house. The bishop's house. What a lucky guy. It's believable that the big cathedrals and the major cities today were built because they had the resources, but this is still just a small village and this was built over a thousand years ago. I don't know how they did it. Of course, she found the smallest hole she could get through. Are you kidding me? No wonder I didn't find you. Yeah. We literally crawled through a hole in the ground. I don't know, Lucifer. She just went down there and never saw her again. This was their kitchen. These holes in the ground are tandoori ovens and they would stick bread to the walls, you put meat in the middle, and that's your food. Could you imagine this being the kitchen? That's incredible. This tower is the coolest part of this entire complex. The monastery was built on a fault line and this is a seismograph. It sensed earthquakes. Not only did it sense earthquakes, but it also sensed incoming invasions because of the earth moving, it would sway. It was built by the monks who lived here and it was built a thousand years before the modern day seismograph had even been invented. This is the one thing in this entire complex that has withstood time and not actually crumbled or fallen due to invasion or earthquake. At one point in time, invaders even tried to use the power of bulls to bring it down and they failed and they thought that there had to have been some type of dark magic here that held this thing up and they fled so there's a lot of mystery surrounding this to this day we still don't know how the monks built it but here it remains and unfortunately in the 50s it was torn apart to try and reveal the mystery and in doing so they broke it so it worked up until the 50s and the mystery still remains I love that all of these rooms are very cool in temperature. Yeah. Like there's something so comfortable about them, even though it's like cold stone. Completely wrong saying that all of these holes are ovens, but at least one of them are. And it makes sense that they had other cooking things here. Because the smoke would release. Because the smoke would go up. And you can see all the black. So. That would be huge. Amazing. I mean, if you had a thousand monks here, you're gonna need more than one kitchen. Not only was this a house for monks and artisans, but at one point in time, back in the medieval days, this was a university. Yeah. A medieval university. It was a school. just leaving the monastery to go to a viewpoint and uh, some friends met us outside. Goodbye. Bye bye. There's a really popular viewpoint of the monastery from above that we want to get to, but we don't have a car and we have to walk on the side of this really sketchy road to get there. So, join us. I know I say this every time, but it's needed. This is all Amber's idea. Let's walk on the side of the highway. Okay. 
She's so excited. Ta-da! It was worth almost dying for. <laughs> it was fine. Yeah, that's it. Ta-da! We're gonna head over there. We're gonna start making our way back down this treacherous road. But we're gonna stop by the cable car area, see what the prices for round trip ticket are. We don't wanna go just one way and have to hike back like five miles through the mountains right now. So if we can afford it or if we're willing to pay, we're going to. At the very least, we can let all of you know how much it costs when you decide to visit. Somehow coming back down was a lot more simple than going up, but we're already at the cable car. So we're gonna see these prices. How often do they? Every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes. Um, what's on the other side? Uh, nature. Nature? Same like this. Same like this. Okay. Do you want to be like 30 minutes? Yeah, give us like 30 minutes after. So yeah, yeah 30, 30 minutes there. So it was definitely cheaper than I expected. Yeah. Not that it's cheap, but no. cheaper. And there's nobody here. So there's like no waiting time. There's no line. There's nothing going on. This cable car is so much more important than just a tourist attraction. All of the proceeds is what helped renovate the monastery. The monastery was in complete ruins 10 years ago, but because of this tramway, they had enough money to rebuild. The money also goes to helping the village, lights, playgrounds, cleaning up garbage, and employs people. Our host actually was a security guard here before he was a host full time. And so this is much more than just one person making money. It's helping the entire village. Think we can feed them apples? They're eating them right now. I want to feed them an apple. Want an apple? Come on, we've met before. You know me. <laughs> they found a gold mine over here. Mm -hmm. It was a really short, fast ride, but we get to do it twice, so... It was a really fast 12 minutes. Yeah. And on the other side, there's uh, no village, really. There's a lot to see in this area that we found out from the cable car. There's hiking, there's other monasteries, there's ruins. We could have stayed here another couple of days and, and really explored. There's more to see. Fast food. Heck yes, buddy. We've been walking around all day and we're a little hungry, so we might get something to eat. We only have 30 minutes on this side, so we don't have a lot of time to explore, but we'll see what's here. I guess the restaurant doesn't exist yet, but look at this view. And just like that, it's time to head back. Now we get 12 minutes to go back. Hope you enjoyed the ride as much as we did. It was great. We're gonna head home and eat now. Yes. We leave tomorrow morning to head back to Yerevan and into our next country. We're gonna take an overnight train from Yerevan into Tbilisi, Georgia. And I'm so excited. We haven't done an overnight train yet. This is gonna be our first one. Yep, so see you guys next time. I just stood next to a window to take a picture of the church and I heard somebody snoring. I'm like right next to someone's bedroom apparently. It was loud.